Hermitcraft is one of the biggest shows on the internet right now. It's a gigantic collaborative series on YouTube where 27 different prominent YouTubers all play in the same Minecraft world. It's difficult to pin down exactly what genre it falls into. It's definitely a gaming series, sort of a let's play, but it's also a series with overarching plots, an improv show where people make new storylines all the time, and a reality show where people are competing to win prizes. It's interactive, and a series that you can watch from 27 different perspectives at once. It's completely unlike anything else on the internet, and it's amazing. In this video, I'm going to be going over all the reasons why Hermitcraft is the best collaborative show on YouTube. Okay, so what exactly is Hermitcraft? Well, basically, about 12 years ago, a few Minecraft YouTubers got together to start a series. Each person would make episodes separately, allowing for multiple different perspectives on all the events in the game. After a year or so, equaling maybe 30 to 50 episodes, they would end the season and start over with a few more people. Fast forward 12 years, and there are 27 members, most with hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Even the smallest one, a guy called Skizzleman, still has 150,000 subscribers, about 25 times more than me. If you hit the subscribe button, we can change that. And Green and Mumbo Jumbo, the two most prominent members, both consistently get millions of views on their episodes, which is insane to me, considering how Mumbo actually commented on my last Minecraft video. Thanks man, that was really cool of you. Didn't expect you to watch it. Oh, and by the way, I upgraded the puppet. Look, I have 15 different expressions now. It's a little hard to understate how unbelievably huge Hermitcraft is for a YouTube show. Most collaborations on this platform will only have four or five YouTubers at most and will run for a year or two. You know, Hermitcraft has lasted for over a full decade, a good three times longer than the entire Trump presidency. So how has this show lasted 12 years? What keeps people coming back? Well, it's a convergence of a few different factors that are all pretty unique to this series. There's some things that Hermitcraft does that a lot of other media just doesn't. For example, number one, multiple perspectives. Hermitcraft is one of the most unique framing devices of any series on YouTube. The YouTubers, known as Hermits, get together on one server, so they're all playing on the exact same Minecraft world for an entire season. Each Hermit records episodes for their own personal season, and they tend to spread their bases out a decent amount, so each of them ends up playing out a different storyline throughout the series. While they usually live within a reasonable distance of each other, the Hermits interact with different people, have different neighbors, and participate in different activities, which makes each of their experiences feel unique. For example, in the most recent season, number 10, seven hermits are living around a place called Magic Mountain, all on different sides of it. Those folks had a meeting in a recent set of episodes, which ended with a massive explosion. If you were watching from, say, Scar's perspective, then the meeting would end with Grian pulling a lever and unexpectedly blowing everyone up. But if you were to watch from Grian's perspective, you would get to see him taking the time to collect and rig all the TNT, and wait in suspense for him to pull the lever and trigger an ungodly huge explosion. It's like that thing Hitchcock said. You can see the same event from multiple different points of view, which is a rare treat in any form of media, as it tends to be exorbitantly expensive. But when each actor is recording their own content anyway, it ends up being pretty easy to do. And of course, since they're all living close to each other, they get to chat and check in with the progress of the others without taking away from the appeal of their content. It's a great way both for the viewer to get a peek into what's going on with the other hermits, as well as a way for the hermits themselves to promote each other's stuff. And this means that everyone's viewing experience with Hermitcraft is unique. Most people only watch one to three different hermits, maybe checking in with the others if something particularly notable happens. But those aren't always the same people. Again, there are 27 different possible perspectives, so you can pick and choose which ones you want to view from. It would be like watching a TV show with an enormous cast, only you can go to the settings and change who the main character is. One person might follow Green and Scar, another Tango, Dog and Stress, and another might just watch Mumbo Jumbo. It's an experience you can pretty much only get on a platform like YouTube, and it's awesome. With Hermitcraft, if you're not a fan of one of the characters, you can switch over to watching from the perspective of another. In some ways, it's like the appeal of playing a game like Smash Brothers. It's a massive crossover, and you aren't forced into using any specific character, allowing you to experience the appeal of every single series at once, while still sticking with a small handful of favorites. And these multiple perspectives and a broad audience lead to a really interesting fan community. Because everyone focuses on different people, all of the fans make art about different hermits. The people who draw them and animate them don't always cover the same players, which means that browsing any sort of fan site will get you a completely different interpretation of what's happening. You check out the topic on YouTube, Reddit, or Twitter, and you'll see people making art and chatting about events that you might have only seen the aftermath of. Hermitcraft is basically a TV show or a novel where you can pick the characters you want to see the story through and that's one of its biggest selling points. And what's even cooler is that the Hermits will often take inspiration from social media posts or YouTube comments, allowing a level of community interaction with the people in the show. It's awesome, but it's not what people really stick around for, as it would be nothing without... Number two, the crossover events. 
Because Hermitcraft is a comedic Minecraft series following a bunch of very silly people, little unimportant events have a tendency to butterfly effect into massive server-wide conflicts or games. Rian, in particular, is kind of infamous for starting a ton of these. For example, take the mayoral race in Season 7. In each season of Hermitcraft, there's a little area in the middle of the server where each hermit can create a shop to sell their wares. Rian was getting a bit frustrated with how messy the whole place was and how there was no governing body, so he decided to put up a bunch of posters advocating for Mumbo to become mayor of the town without Mumbo's knowledge or consent. This led to a cascading mess of misadventures and shenanigans, including, but not limited to, tons of other candidates joining, Zombie Cleo taking a poll with her in-game newspaper, Mumbo and Green building an AI called Grumbot to tell them the best way to win, Green hiring a guy called Jono to make two new songs for him to use in pranks for the mayoral campaign, Good Times the Scar hiring Beatubs to be his campaign sergeant, and to neither Green nor Mumbo voting for Mumbo, both instead independently voting for Scar, who ended up winning. Green and Scar worked together to create a town hall where Scar, the mayor, would deliver edicts from his throne of diamonds. This also inspired Joe Hills to run as dog catcher, but he wasn't getting much traction due to the notable lack of dogs in the shopping district. Not much longer after, a bunch of dogs mysteriously appeared over all the shops, leading him to win the position with a unanimous vote. Nobody else was running. So basically, a little joke Green was playing on Mumbo ended up cascading into the creation of a mayoral race and a central government. Another similar example, also started by Green, was the Mycelium Resistance. See, after the mayoral race, everyone got rid of the grey mycelium around the shopping district in place of the bright green grass, and Green once again decided to play a little joke on everyone. He put back some mycelium and some signs, declaring it a resistance against the government. Flash forward a dozen episodes, and it's escalated into a full-on civil war between Hermitcraft environmental protection and the mycelium resistance, with secret bases, spy networks, traps, hundreds of sheep, and a break-in, finally culminating in a full-out battle between the two sides. And because of the different perspectives, you could follow any member of either of the sides as they consolidated power and plotted revenge, and the fans would make art in support of both of them. These sorts of things happen every single season, with carnival games like Tango Tech's Decked Out or Mumbo's The Button, landmarks like the Bodum Pole and the Permit Office, and events like Rendog's Takeover as King and the Tallest House Build-Off. Every single one of these is like a miniature version of the MCU's Avengers, where each of the individual characters you've been following all suddenly come together to play out a big plotline. And because the show is almost entirely improvised, and comedic improv is a medium that's well suited for raising stakes, these sorts of things tend to happen quite a bit. For an example of what I mean, at the start of Season 10, Green was desperately trying to find a rare mending book by fishing. He spent hours and hours sitting by the water, catching tons of fish and the occasional bit of treasure, but none of it was the treasure he wanted. Hermits walking by asked him what he was doing and gradually joined in to hang out. And what happens when you get a bunch of ridiculous people together with fishing rods? They start messing around with Minecraft's weird physics. This simple activity once again escalated, each hermit taking turns sitting in a boat, with the others attaching their lines to the boat, reeling them in at the same time, and thereby launching the boat a full kilometer into the sky. Having such an improvised format with so many people who genuinely seem to be good friends in real life leads to all sorts of situations like this. Plus, each of the individual hermits has a variety of different skills. Green and Bumbo are sort of a power couple when it comes to projects. They got started because Green was great at building and Bumbo was great at redstone, basically Minecraft electricity, but neither of them were particularly good at the other's skill. While they've become more well-rounded since then, they still both have their own unique skills and work on a lot of projects together as a result. If you're more interested in watching the building, you can check out someone like Beatubs or Scar. Well, if you find Redstone more interesting, then Doc and Tango are for you. And anytime there's any sort of PvP event or break-in, you can tune into False Symmetry, who's notoriously good at that sort of thing. And while many of the fun bets are just silly things like this, a ton of the appeal also comes from the immense amount of work each and every one of them puts into their seasons. This show simply would not work without... Number three, effort. Being a hermit takes a lot of effort. Playing Minecraft for a living may not seem like a ton of work, but it's actually really time consuming. See, every hermit creates their own base of operations, most of which are huge. And since they're playing Minecraft, they also have to gather all the resources themselves. Either that, or they buy them from one of the other hermits using diamonds that it also took them a long time to obtain. For example, take the Valley of Tattoo Ren, Ren Dog's base in Season 7. It's an enormous Star Wars themed valley, complete with a sand crawler, a hangar for a TIE fighter, Jabba's palace, and a recreation of Darth Vader's fortress. The fortress in particular took hundreds of hours of collective work to create, with hermits helping him collect and place down and pour out tens of thousands of blocks of blackstone and buckets of lava. 
And while his base was particularly large that season, it's not like the others were much smaller. Tengu Tech's Deep Frost Citadel, Mumbo's Wrench Tower, False Symmetry Cyberpunk City, and Cub Fans Canyon all also took absolute ages to create. Sure, a large portion of most of the episodes will just be fun little interactions with other hermits, but almost all of them will also contain a hermit working on an extremely impressive and time-consuming project. For a quick example of how much effort goes into an average episode, look at this video from Mumbo called Mining for 12 Hours of Minecraft. Three guesses on what it's about. So basically, in an effort to get a lot of diamonds, which are the currency in Hermitcraft, Mumbo spent 12 straight hours mining, sitting at his computer doing this. And after that, he edited 12 hours of footage into a single well-produced and scripted video, all for one upload, which he does twice a week. That is frankly absurd. And Mumbo isn't unique in this aspect either. All of the videos from every single hermit are well shot, well edited, and take hours and hours of in-game time to create before they even get to producing the final product. And this sort of work makes watching their progress incredibly satisfying, as what you're seeing is something you yourself would never have the time to do in-game. It's like playing a sport for fun and then going home to watch somebody who's worked for years to do it professionally. You have school or a job, but this is their job, which means they can put in the time to finish projects you couldn't complete in five years of casual play. And what they accomplish is just really impressive. There's more work put into this internet show than most. Conclusion Hermitcraft is an amazing show. It's almost impossible to pin down exactly what it is. It's a let's play, an improv comedy, a collab, a reality TV show, and so much more. And you know what? Screw it. It's the best collaborative show on YouTube. I have never seen a crossover show on this platform with more heart, care, love, and effort put into it. If you're a fan of Minecraft content and you're not already watching it, check it out. I would recommend starting with either Season 10, which is happening right now, or Season 7, which is my personal favorite. It's kid-friendly, but not necessarily made for kids, and plenty of older teens and adults watch the show too. Most tournaments have a fairly strict no-swearing policy, but they never talk down to their audiences, so it is a pretty broad appeal for all of the many people interested in Minecraft. It's sort of like Looney Tunes. Even though the cartoons are made for kids, plenty of adults still love them regardless, as being made for a younger age demographic doesn't make them any less interesting or funny. And just like Looney Tunes, Hermitcraft is just good. And that's it. That's why Hermitcraft is amazing. I hope you enjoyed. If you hated the video, please leave a dislike and a comment telling me how I can improve. If you liked it, I won't interrupt your gaming to ask you to give this video a like. Thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you sometime in the future.